Hi there, this is Richard Knowles from Element Finance. I hope you're all well. Uh, if you're watching this video or reading this blog, hopefully uh, you have read and watched a few that went before it um, because we are now going to talk about uh, the fourth pillar in our six pillars of, uh, of property development. So if you've skipped a couple, uh, you've kind of come in right in the middle of this. So you need to rewind back a, a step and look for the other, the other blogs and videos. So the six pillars, just to briefly recap, are pillar number one is about the opportunity. Pillar number two is about the appraisal of that opportunity. Pillar number three is about, it's the two Ps, purchasing and planning. Of, of said opportunity. Pillar number four, which is what we're going to talk about today, um, is finance, our main area of expertise. So we're glad we finally got here so we can talk about that today. Um, and pillar number five is construction, how you uh, construct and build the project out, some little tips and do's and don'ts there. Uh, and pillar number six is the all important exit. So they're the sort of six key areas as we see it. Um, as I said, today we're on pillar number four. So we're going to talk about finance. So finance, we've talked about it very, very briefly. To get to this stage, you will have done, uh, you will have spotted your opportunity. You will have done your um, viability and light touch high level uh, uh, financial appraisal of it. So you will, have, you will have carried out some of this. This isn't intended to be a massive deep dig. We could talk about finance all day long, and I don't want this to be a massively long video. So this is just to give you some of the fundamentals of what the lenders will be looking for, what you need to have considered, and what you need to have done um, to approach a lender. Now, whether you uh, you are going to use another broker or whether you are going to use our services, it, it, it matters not. The same information, you will need this information. You will need to have considered this information. So we will start with the GDV. We work backwards, so gross development value. Oh, and this, by the way, sorry, just before we get into it, there are loads of other forms of finance. We're talking purely about development finance today on a development project. There's lots of hybrids. There's lots of other stuff we can help you with for smaller developments. You can use uh, bridging, short-term uh, finance. You know, there's, there's loads of other things that we can use for, for various other projects. We're talking purely and simply about development finance today. So it works backwards. We start with a gross development value or GDV. So that is whatever it is you're building, whether it be flats, houses, doesn't matter, you will have had a gross development value, what it's gonna be worth at the end. You should have considered this. I'm sure you will have done lots of, uh, lots of due diligence on this. So you will have gone and had a look at square meterage, square footage prices of, of similar properties in, a, in, in the same area or similar areas um, to a similar spec. Had a look at what they've been sold for, we've done all that sort of stuff online. Uh, hopefully you would have approached a, an agent or maybe even a couple of agents. Uh, from a lender's perspective, they will want to see, particularly in the current market, where there's a little bit of uncertainty, they will want to see that you've done your, um, you've done your homework, you've done your due, due diligence and the GDV makes sense. We can't just pluck a figure out of the air, it has to be based on fact and they will want to see evidence of that as well. So that's step number one, very, very important. Okay, step number two, build cost. So, got your GDV, we then need our build cost. This, again, from a lender's perspective, it needs to be more than a, a back of a fact packet calculation uh, by now. So we, we need to either have a, a fully, uh, fully costed out by a, a QS or, or by the construction company. But essentially what we then have to do is, is we want to then break that down and we need a, a cash flow. So it's not just a, an overall build cost. We've got an overall build cost. We then want to know how long, what's the time frame of the project, we need to then plot and plan a cash flow. When are you likely to need the money? Now, again, not an exact science, and uh, uh, you know, but it, it's, it's to give a good indication. So, if it's an 18-month project, we need an 18-month cash flow. We help our clients with that. We can do that for you. Overall bill cost is the important thing. So, as long as you have that in in some good detail as well, um, you know, this is what you need at this stage to to approach a, a lender. Um, is then all the other associated costs that you want to add to it, your, you know, your architect's costs and, and, and so on. Now, the way this works, and we are just going to talk purely about development finance. So there are different lenders who will lend you different percentages. So I'm going to talk broad brush. I'm going to talk about the, the mainstream, if you like. Um, high street lenders will have the best rates. Um, they won't lend anywhere near to the same percentages as as tier two lenders. I'm talking specifically about tier two lenders when I, when I give some of these indications and numbers now. So what a lender will actually do is they will lend you, generally speaking, 80% of the, 
of the overall cost of the project, cost, all your costs roll together, or 65% of the gross development value. And generally speaking, whichever one of those two is lower is where they'll sit. So in an ideal world, they will cover 100% of your build costs, and then it works backwards, and whatever's left at the end, they call it a day one contribution. That will be your contribution towards the land. Now, this is why this is important, because I get phone calls all the time saying, well, you know, how much percentage can I get towards the, this land opportunity? Um, and we need to work the numbers through to give you a, to give you a real number from a lender. Um, we can't just pluck a percentage out there because it's different depending on how long the build project is, how much you're spending on the build, um, whether you're using a mainline contractor or whether you're, you're managing all the, the separate trades yourself. So, you know, it, that's why the cash flow is important and then it will give you an overall number at the end. So that's how development finance works in, in simplistic terms. Obviously, there's, there's nuances and, and a lot more in, in there. We're more than happy to have a look at any individual project and give anyone any, any guidance on it if, if anybody's unsure. So in terms of the basics, you will have need to have given some rigor to your gross development value, massively important. Two other areas. So whether you're using a, uh, if you're using a mainline contractor, they will still add a contingency in. Um, it's still prudent to do that. And if you haven't done it, the lender will add it anyway. Um, so, you know, it's best that you've, you've added that in. Even if you're on a fixed price, price contract, they still want to add a, you know, maybe just a 5% contingency. If you're managing the whole thing yourself and all the individual trades, or maybe you've got a project manager in, the contingency will still, they'll still want to be there. It's still prudent to add a 10% contingency into your bill costs. So that's that's the other point that's that's quite important to mention. On your builder, um, it's really, really important that it, they may want to see financial records of the builder to see how, how well they've been doing or the contractor. Um, that's, you know, that's, that's fairly common. Um, we sometimes, or the builder, would, would sometimes have a CV. If they don't have a CV, it's something that you'll need to put together. Or if you are the builder, um, you, know, you need to have a look at, and have a think about a, a, a CV. Uh, and in terms of a CV, I mean what projects you've done in the past. Um, s similar projects, you know, it, it's about de-risking this for, for the lenders. So, you know, the, the builder CV is important. And your CV is the developer, you know, where you're at, what have you done in the past, you know, what makes you qualified in essence. Um, and actually, we sit down and piece all this together. If you're going to use a project manager, if you've got the right team around you, you can get away with is the wrong word. It's not get away with. It's if you're, if this is your first development, everyone starts somewhere. If it's your first development, if you've got the right team wrapped around you, the right experience, and it's presented in the right way, um, it's not a computer says no moment, but you need to have the right skill sets around you to supplement the skill sets that you don't have. That's massively important. So that in a nutshell is from a very high level, uh, the finance element of it. Like I said, I could rattle on for, for a, a good old length of time and there's lots of other bits of information that I know I haven't gone into huge amounts of detail on a lot of it, but I've covered the three sort of key areas that you need to consider really, um, and that's around rigor and due diligence on your, your gross development value number, the same around your, your, your CV for, for your builder and your build numbers, um, and also give some thought to your own uh, CV as well and track record. They're the three things um, that, that they will want to see, as well as the other thing is a viable project. If the numbers don't make any sense, trust me, they're not going to make any sense to a lender. If they don't make any sense to you. They don't make any sense to me. Why the hell are they going to risk their money on it? They're not. Um, and there's lots of other forms of finance as well. But we were talking just purely about raising debt development finance today in this, this short video. Uh, I say short. It's already rattling on towards 10, 10 minutes. Hence the reason why I'm now going to cut it short and say thank you very much for your time and attention today. I will see you on pillar number five, which is about construction. I look forward to that. Thank you very much.